So I now have a file, an auth server, and a terminal. And now I need to keep them up to date. Ninefront gets fairly frequent updates. Some of them are fairly minor, like adding Xbox controllers to the joystick driver, uh, to more important stuff like security and stability issues. So let's run through updating the system. First off, this is a situation where I really have to think about how the grid is set up. Uh, what all this is going to involve is downloading a bunch of files to be stored on the file server and then compiling a bunch of code um, which uses a bunch of CPU and disk access. If I do this from this little terminal here, it means getting the bytes from the internet and then sending them back over to the local file server. And when I compile the code, it means to pull the data over to the terminal, compile it here, which has less RAM and CPU um, than the, uh, the file server does, uh, and then sending it back to the file server. Uh, this certainly isn't the case for every setup. Uh, maybe you have a low power file server and a more powerful terminal. But in my case, I'm going to be using the rcpu command. So open up a window here. Uh, right now I'm using as a, my standard user on the grid. So I'm going to have to also, I'm going to go to central and I'll specify the user Glenda who has access to change the system files. All right, so now this window is, uh, through the magic of namespace manipulation, is using the CPU and stuff on the uh, file server. So I'll go ahead and open up Rio just to make this a little bit more visible here. That's, and there we go. So Ninefront makes this pretty straightforward. First off, there is a, uh, uh, just a script called sysupdate. So, and it's actually just a script here, so we can look at it. So it's going to uh, bind in the uh, the git stuff, uh, make sure you're in the right branch, and then do a pull here. So this is a nine front specific thing. A while back, they came up with their own native uh, git implementation and switched everything over to that. So all I really need to do is just run sysupdate. And that's going to contact the server and update any code it might need updating. So all the changes have been fetched and the next thing we need to do is recompile all the software. So we can do that from the sys source directory. Now from here, I could just run the make command, which in uh, plan nine has been shortened to just MK. Uh, but I should mention that while this is fine 99% of the time, every once in a while there is a change made to something like a core library or to the compilers, uh, which means that some other steps should be taken first. Uh, this is a research operating system. It isn't always user friendly. I do recommend checking the nine front mailing lists for any announcements about updates that require special handling. Uh, but since I don't have anything like that, I'm just going to run uh, make install. And there we go, all done. So we're done with compiling, but it's going to leave behind a lot of garbage files. Uh, to clean those up, you run just make clean, and it will go through and uh, basically just sort of clean up the leftover stuff. Um, 
However, another thing to keep in mind is that this is just the sort of system software, the programs and libraries and things. Um, there's often changes to the kernel. So to do that, we're already in system source. We'll go to 9PC64. This is for the 64-bit Intel and AMD stuff. And same sort of thing. We can just run make install here to compile a new kernel. And this is usually pretty quick. And it's done. So that's all there is to that. And then we just make clean again. And so now we have a fresh kernel and all the uh, system files updated too. Now this is fine for the terminal here um, because when it boots, it will ultimately download the boot kernel from the directory that the kernel was moved into. However, the file server has to load the kernel from somewhere else because it can't boot off a file server that isn't running yet. So that kernel is stored in the 9FAT partition. So we will have to access the storage device to get to it. So first we'll have to make sure the storage devices are accessible. Um, and then after that, we'll uh, move on to the rest. So first, we'll bind in the actual hard drives for the file server into dev. And it looks like they were already there, but now they're there twice, just to make sure. Um, Ninefront provides a pretty handy little script called 9FS that can be used for mounting a variety of things. And one of them is the 9FAT partition. So we'll do that. It puts it in N. So there's 9FAT. Oops. And slash 9 slash, or wait, slash 9FAT. And so there's our kernel right there. So what I'll just do is uh, go ahead and move over the old kernel. I'll keep it here just in case I want it. Oops, uh, did that in the wrong order. Nine, or nine PC64 to nine PC64 old. And then we'll copy in the uh, new one, which will be an AMD 64. 9PC64, nine, nine we'll put it here. Oh, too many P's. There we go. And now we have our new kernel here installed on November 8th. So now it's time to reboot everything. So I've rebooted the file server and rebooted the terminal. And now I'm running up to date code and kernel. I uh, hope you found this helpful. And as usual, have fun.